Bro, say better. Better. Say you are not better than me. I am better than you. Say leadership. Leadership. Say leadership development. Leadership development. Bro, what we're here for? We are here for Axe Your AI Team Episode 7. Welcome to Ask Your AI Team Episode 7. As you guys know, this is not the normal weekend edition. We have a different edition during the week, so you guys can interact a little bit more with us. And we are very excited to be here with you. I'm Arthur Ferevanchiba, AI VP Organizational Development. And I'm Braham Anamon, AI VP Operations in charge of Africa. And we are really excited to have this space with you. Yeah! Osindu asks. Can you give me three options other than the information sessions and one-to-one -one marketing campaigns to market and attract OGCDP? Thank you very much, Pasindo, for the question. Uh, as an ex-LCVP OGCDP, I will just try as much as possible to give you a bit more information concerning your question with regards to some of the GCPs I have seen in the network and also what I was able to do during my time. So I believe that you can first capitalize on the various virtual platforms, talking about Facebook. Uh, now we have the Facebook uh, live sessions where you can even use to run like uh, online recruitment sessions for uh, for your potential customers. Wherever they are, they can still get access to it. That's one thing that you can try to capitalize on. Snapchat, we have a lot of young people now moving, like a like lot of traffic on Snapchat because young people are fancying like being on Snapchat. And it's also one of the cool uh, ways for you to also attract people. And also talking about um, uh, even using our company OP and using our website, it also helps a lot to attract more people to the programs. And the last thing that I believe you can also capitalize on is partnership with your universities and other youth organizations operating your universities because they have a lot of uh, people within uh, the association or within their networks and they can help us a lot to get more of them to go on the shift. Jana asks, what communication channels are adopted between AI and the NCs? Hi Jenna, thank you very much for the question. So in terms of communication channels, we have two different streams. We have physical touch points and we have virtual touch points. In terms of physical touch points, we have twice a year global conferences. As of now, IC and IPM, which happen in August and February. IPM only for MCPs and IC for MCs and for the whole LCP network. And regional conferences that normally happen twice a year in some regions a little bit more. But this is the main physical touch points uh, besides normally chairing from AI people for uh, national conferences or something like that. And visiting, normally we visit around 30 to 40% of the network and that's when we get to touch in the MCs. Besides that, in the virtual touch point side, we have for MCP specifically, MCP newsletter that goes weekly or bi-weekly. And for the whole membership, we have the global newsletter. I hope you guys are receiving it. It's super good, right? And uh, Global newsletter is bi-weekly as of now. Besides that, in terms of official touch points, we have the social media, of course, and we have a little bit more focus on the whole membership, not in something specific for MCs. So this is the physical and virtual touch points that we try to combine together for the messages to flow for the whole network. Corina asks, is it possible for the people that are under 18 years old to go on an exchange? Okay, thank you Corina for your question. and. I think this kind of question I've been asked in most of the previous episodes and I'll be I'll be trying to answer this question once and for all. Unfortunately, if you're under the age of 18, you cannot go on exchange with Isaac because according to a global compendium which set out the main uh, conduct at which we run our exchange program do not uh, stipulate that people below 18 years can go on exchange. So if you are between the ages of 18 and 30, you have the opportunity to go for an Isaac global exchange program. But for now, we do not have any programs, specific exchange programs for people under 18 years. Jana asks, how are BD and PR done on a global scale and how does AI coordinate on that by its role? So, BD and PR, very different. So we have two very different JDs, two very different roles from the global office. BD is much about uh, financial capacity of Isaac International and how, how whatever is going to bring us the financial capacity and be able to capitalize on opportunities, especially towards exchange. In terms of PR, it's much more towards the reach, whatever is going to bring us the most reach and make Isaac more viral, more known. And that's why, for example, we focus a lot on not, not, not necessarily corporate organizations. We have, for example, public foundation, we have UN, we're going to a lot of UN events, for example. 
And with D, for example, have ADB, where you have a project with ADB of doing 10,000 exchanges. So it's very different, but at the same time very similar in terms of being this external perspective for the global offices with very different roles inside of it. Sami asks, I wish to request you if I can join AI team organization. Thank you very much, Sami, for your question. So what we mean by AI team is the ISAC International team. So the ISAC Inter International team is similar to, uh, like similar to the more or less are the directors managing a global organization and they are responsible for the day-to-day -day management of the entire organization of ISAC. So, but for you to be part of the ISAC International team, first you need to join as a member in a local committee and you can check this at this link uh, to see how you can join ISAC and by joining ISAC, some people take like two years to get to the ISAC International team, some people take three years, some people take five years, some people take six years like myself. So it's, it's, it's not a worry at all. Anybody have the opportunity to be part of the ISAC International team. But the first thing you need to do is you need to be part of the organization to be able to embrace the values of the organization and to understand uh, how the organization runs as a whole before you can get to the ISAC International level. Igor Goendra asks, I want to know the names of all the AI members and their roles. Okay, hi Igor, how are you? So easy job, right? Okay, so 24 of them, I'll try my best. Here they are. Stefan, JM, Fede, Mona, Chiara, Nati, me, Brenham, Kasha, Hamza, Wijaja, Vivis, Mark, Dasha, Suarez, Kasha, Nils, Ivana, Gurin, Dima, Felipe, Moni, Maggit, and Ana Sadariaga, the president of Isaac International. And if you want further information, here's the link with our presentation video. Okay guys, that was it. Thank you very much for being with us for the seventh episode of Ask ASK, your AI team. But wait, don't scroll down yet. We have some two messages for you guys. Okay, if you still have more questions, kindly write in the comment box and we are going to respond to you as soon as possible. And also for more updated information, just like our Facebook page and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and we are going to get more information about the organization and also know how the day-to-day -day operations have been run. Yes, and don't forget, we, for this weekend we have a special edition when you're voting for your favorite host of the thingy. And don't forget, we're going to have some surprises and it's going to be super cool. It's us, right? See you there. It's one person only. Ah, it's me. No. Bye, guys.